Welcome to Supercontrol Refresher Part 1. This will be a condensed but hopefully informative session that looks at some of the frequently asked questions that we've had from our setups. So I'd like to just draw your attention to the admin menu first of all, and we go to the terms and conditions. So in here, you can see if you put your terms and conditions, these will go onto the booking form and your customer must say that they have read them. So it's well worth popping them in. You can type them in, you can copy and paste them from Word. You can fill in any of these if you have a cancellation policy, a privacy policy. And depending on the channels that you use, this will also then go through to them. So I'll go back to the admin menu and go down to logo upload. In here, you can pop the logo for your business and that will be available then to pull through to your emails and letters. And if you click this box, it will be added to your booking summary. Just going to go now to the properties and edit. And in here, if you're in an actual property, you will be used to seeing this little menu here. But just so that you're aware, when you first go into properties edit, you can choose any of those smaller menu options from this right hand side drop down field. For the purposes of the next step, we're just going to go into settings. So, so as I go down the page, it's all quite self-explanatory, but we'd like to draw your attention to online bookings allowed. This is the days prior to arrival that you're willing to let guests stay. And I have it set at zero. So if a guest was to book today for today, they would be able to come and stay at my property. Just going to move down. This is for your weekly stays. And in here, just let you see this section here that says calculate short breaks across price bands. So if this box is ticked, this will read across price bands if a booking would land across price bands. So two different price bands on your price planner, that button ticked would calculate the price across the two of them. Just moving down a little bit for the short breaks grid. Remember this column down this side is the days of arrival for your guests. This column along the top, departure days. So for example, on a Sunday, anything less than seven nights, I don't allow at all. Seven nights or more, I'm happy for them to arrive and depart any day. You could change that to suit you. For example, maybe you allow a two night stay from a Friday, from a Sunday rather, sorry. So Sunday night and Monday night. It's just one of those little things to have a play with. So arrival days down, departure days across. I'd like to just bring your attention to minimum price. This is a safety net feature. So that you could put in here the minimum price, the absolute minimum price you would allow for any booking in your super control system. Taking into account any of your discounts or special prices, because this setting, if you have a number in this setting, it will never let everything go under that price. I'm going to take you now back up to the top and into your price planner. Just to make you aware that the blue line is your prices and an orange line, if you have one, is your short break setting. For example, if you have a month where you only have a blue line, you'll only be regarding your seven night stays. To enable short breaks, even if you have the settings in your property settings, you must have an orange line here. And that will enable your short breaks. Just a quick mention of your start days. So for example, because I have set up in my property settings page, these days are start days. That's why they're yellow. You can disable them by clicking and it asks, do you want to make that day disabled? Okay. A little red box means it's disabled. Should you want to enable a day that's not currently enabled, same process, click on one of the white boxes, you're enabling that as a start day. Just going to open your price line. This is where you manage your, your weekly and your short break prices. And as you can see, you can put in daily prices here. You have a maximum capacity that you've set in your property. I have seven. You can add pricing for each just in there. 
nor would you be able to click save. When you have pair of pairs and pricing in, this number will not be black, it will be red. It's not an error, it's just an alert to let you know you have pair of pairs and pricing. On here, if we go to options and extras, you can pop in the rental and pricing notes, something that might be specific to your property. So for example, I have no large dogs allowed. This will then appear underneath your property name or things like your booking summary, etc. Just going to show you one other thing within the um, <clears throat> excuse me the properties menu, which is chart display. In here you have show your calendars until, and then it explains your most recent prices are until whatever data has there. So for me, I have prices in until the end of this year. I need to set this to January next year to make sure that my prices are showing all the way up to and including the 31st of December. So just a quick check if you feel that your, your prices are not showing up to the end of your pricing in your price planner. Just quickly going in here, so bookings and booking sources. This is useful for marketing and what you can pop in here is Anywhere that you think you might receive a guest booking from. So I have Google, word of mouth, return visitor. You can pop anything that you think or you've got evidence of having guests in that way before. Click add new. And you can report on that by going to statistics and customer booking sources. Put in the dates that you're looking for and you can see here it reports on how many you've had from each of those booking sources. I'm going to quickly go over making a booking from the easiest way possible, which is bookings and grid view. So if you go in here and someone happens to be on the phone and they're calling to request a holiday on the, the 10th of February for Chestnut Lodge, you can look in here and see that it's full, but you can also tell your guests that you have availability for three of your other properties or perhaps maybe two weeks in advance, you'll be able to check in here. If they say they'd like to go ahead, you can click on the date they would like to book, how many nights they would like to book for, and you can give them a quote over the phone because the price is pulled through here for you. If they're happy, you can click place booking. Fill in the information that you require for your guest booking. Fill in the guest information. And what we mentioned previously about the booking source, you can click here, click over the phone, and click save. This will now take you to your most often used page for making bookings. So on this side, you have your customer details. On this side, you have your booking details. And down here, you have your administration tabs. So in here, you can see you have the ability to add things, such as an email address if it comes in later. Uh, comments, remember your guests can see information that's on here. This is not private. If you want to make any private notes, it would be down there, just as an aside. This section, your booking details, something to note here. If you had taken a deposit of £30 in the system as £30, but taken £5 of that, was it paid? It would show here that the deposit paid was £5 and that the system was still looking for £15. I'll show you an example of that. So you can see here, part payment of £5. Super Control knows your deposit is actually £20, so it's looking for the remaining £15. In this section here, if you click Edit, you can make more changes to the accounting side of your booking, should you need to. At the top of the screen, you have a separate menu where you can add options and extras after the booking has been added, if you need to. You can add housekeeper's notes in here, and if you have your guest names, you can pop them in there. Remembering to save after you've made any changes. Last thing to mention, down at the bottom, the two most used tabs here are customer payments and history and correspondence. The customer payments is just here. And if we go back to my previous example booking, if you want to see that it's balance paid because we've dealt with it over the telephone, balance paid, how we paid for it, and click save. That would be different should you have payment processes, but that will come in another refresher, I'm sure. 
Finally, history and correspondence, which is my way of ending Refresher Part 1 and hoping that you will join Refresher Part 2, where we'll go over history and correspondence and inquiries and things like that. Should you wish to be in that, just let us know, send us an email and we will get you added to the list. Thank you so much.